Hola, Nancy. How are you today? I am doing great, Melissa. Thank you for having me here. And thank you so much for what you do for women entrepreneurs out there. I'm delighted to be here just sharing information to help them and support them on their journey. And just to give everyone a little bit more information about Nancy, Ms. Alvarez works for the U.S. Small Business Administration, and she has been with them for many, many years. So like I mentioned before, she has a wealth of knowledge. And today she will be sharing information from a novice entrepreneur to maybe you want to start a business to a veteran entrepreneur that is looking for capital for their business. So again, please take notes and be ready for that Q&A at the end of this segment. Nancy, it's all yours. Thank you, Melissa. And I'll let um, Raul put up our presentation. In the meantime, let me start by saying that, you know, any entrepreneur and in any phase of your business, whether you are an aspiring entrepreneur or you're currently in business uh, and want to grow your business, you need support, right? And so today's presentation will give you um, an insight into the different programs available through the Small Business Administration to either start your business if you're an aspiring entrepreneur or expand, grow your business if you're in another phase in your, in your business. <clears throat> I want to start by sharing with you information on basically what SBA does. What is our mission? Uh, first and foremost, we're one of the smallest federal agencies. We have a very small budget, but I like to say we have a big heart and a big mission. Um, and certainly that is help small businesses start, grow, and recover. Uh, in a nutshell, SBA's mission, as it's stated here, is to maintain and strengthen the nation's economy by enabling the establishment and viability of small businesses and by assisting in the economic recovery of communities after disasters. So whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur, an existing entrepreneur, or you're a business or even a resident, um, we can help you uh, in any facet of business and certainly recover if you're in business or if you're a resident and you were underinsured, certainly we have some programs here to assist with that. Let's move on to our next one and talk about the first thing, which is access to capital. We all know that to start a business or even to expand or grow a business, we all need capital. And so we're gonna talk about some of SBA's programs that you can use to either start or expand your business. So let's go to our next uh, slide. <clears throat> and one more. So SBA is here, and here are the main programs that we have. We have SBA back loans. We have private investors. We have research and development grants. These are grants. And then we have surety band, bond, excuse me. These are our main four carry categories. Let's move on to our next slide. So we can talk about what are SBA backed loans. And so SBA works with approved lenders to offer either microloans or just regular, what we call 7A loans. Um, they're offered at competitive terms, low down payment, flexible overhead requirements. And in addition to that, you get the counseling and education that you're gonna need to be successful and using in using those funds to either start or grow your business. Um, very important here, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between a regular loan and an SBA loan? And so normally what happens if you look statistically speaking, the rate of failure for startups or businesses in the early stages is significantly higher. And banks usually do not like to take that risk. So the SBA comes in and provides a guarantee on the loan, that means it minimizes the risk that the bank will take in making that loan. So that's how the SBA backed loans work. Let's go to our next slide. And in the next slide, you're gonna see that, um, you know, you can use an SBA loan pretty much for anything um, related to this business. We do financing of startups. While it is a little bit more difficult for startups, we usually do have banks that are 
um, participating in SBA's uh, lending that do start up. So again, this is why it's so important for you to take advantage of our resource partners. And I'm gonna talk about our resource partners later on who can really help you put a business plan together and present it to the banks because they're working directly to the bank. So they know who's doing startups, who's, who's doing an existing business. But again, you can pretty much, as you can see in the slide, use the funds for anything even you're running your your um daily operations um you're going to need working capital um so working capital is available um if you want to buy the land or inventory or even equipment that is also available the difference again between an sba back loan uh, again beside being a, uh, a more secure loan less risky loan for the banker it also provides small businesses a larger maturity period. In other words, a larger period for you to repay this loan. If you look at it at a conventional loan, the terms for a conventional loan are, are less, are shorter. Um, so when you have a shorter um, maturity period, usually your monthly payments are gonna be higher. So that's what we bring into the picture. We understand that sometimes uh, small businesses are going to be strapped for cash, so it's important that our loan terms are certainly low terms, so we expand the maturity of the loan to give you that wiggle room to have sufficient capital to run your operations. Let's go to our next slide. <clears throat> okay. Um, increase your chances of securing a loan. This is going to be very important. I'm just going to give you some helpful tips here. Um, because certainly this is going to be a challenge primarily if you don't know how to package a loan or you don't know how to present your loan. So those lenders want to know that they're making a loan to somebody who can pay back this loan, right? Who's going to use the funds wisely and it's going to minimize even further their risk. So it's important that when you present your uh, loan to the bank that you have a business plan your resource partner can help you present an expense sheet. This is going to be important. The financial statements, and if you don't have financial statements because you're currently not in business, then provide financial projections because this is going to give, first and foremost, the lender an opportunity to see how you're going to be able to repay back this loan. Okay, so again, some helpful tips. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna provide you with the resources that you're gonna to need to help you put the right package together to present to your lender. Let's move on to our next slide. <clears throat> so there's an additional tool that you can use. Some people have their own business plan. Um, they're business savvy. They have all the information they need and they don't need a resource partner to put together a business plan, an expense sheet or uh, projections. They know how to do it. Um, so if you do and you want to test the waters, we have a great tool available. It's called the Lender Match. The website is down at the bottom, sba.gov forward slash lender match. This uh, tool is fairly easy to use. You go in there, you basically complete your needs. In other words, what do you need the loan for? What type of industry you're in? Complete that, you submit it. And within two days, you get lenders that are interested in what you um, basically identified as a need or the industry. Once you do that, again, at the two-day mark, uh, the lender will contact you. You will schedule an appointment to talk further with the lender about your needs. And then certainly, if the lender agrees that they want to pursue the opportunity to provide you the funding, then you will actually apply for the loan through the lender. So let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Um, it is very important that we look at all aspects of what is a lender going to look at when they're looking at your loan. Um, and remember that forefront, if you are in the early stages or if you're starting a business, or in any early stage of, of your business, you're gonna be a high risk for the bank. So these are some additional things that they are going to look at. Character, a lot of people ask me, do, does the SBA look at, at credit score? Um, that's a very good question. The SBA is only providing a portion, a guarantee on 
on a portion of the loan. And usually we allow the lender to use whatever means they have available to them to determine your credit worthiness. So sometimes they might use a credit score, um, but most importantly, character. And in SBA's view, if you owe the federal government any money, uh, like a loan that you have not, student loan that you have not repaid, if you haven't paid your federal taxes, if you're delinquent in any way, this is a reflection of your character. Um, if it hasn't paid, let's say in years, you certainly can have a situation where, you know, your derogatory information in your credit by no means is a reflection of your character. And usually banks will give you an opportunity to explain that if there is derogatory information in your credit. Um, they're going to look at cash flow again. That's why it's so important that your business plan has the components I highlighted earlier. They're looking at besides you being able to repay back that uh, loan, will you have cash available to continue to run the operations of the business. Collateral. Even though the SBA will provide a uh, guarantee on a portion of that loan, you're still required to provide collateral. Most of the time, the first option for the lender is to look at whether you're acquiring uh, equipment, uh, things of that nature that they can use as collateral, and they'll use that first. If they still need additional collateral, then they might ask for additional assets to collateralize that loan. Um, capitalization, again, they want to make sure that you are taking a risk, so it's important for you to have some funding, um, whether that is in a savings account, but that it is readily available um, as a risk factor. In other words, hey, I got some skin in the game. Um, I'm using up this capital as well for the business. Okay, so that gives the banker a little better feeling that certainly you are taking some of the risk and you have some skin in the game and, 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 and you want to make this business work. And then certainly look the conditions of the industry. So all those factors are taken into consideration. Let's move on to our next slide. <coughs> all right, uh, let's see, number two. Sometimes you might revert to access capital from investors, and the SBA have a, has a listing of approved lenders. We used to call them angel investors. But if you are interested in exploring this, take into consideration that most investors are going to want some sort of uh, um, ownership interest in your company. So again, these are um, these are investors, and you have to, if you're going to take that into consideration, make sure that you understand, um, you know, what you're giving in exchange. Um, they're called, if you're interested in that, you can certainly access our website. Um, they're called small business investment companies. And again, they're an approved listing of companies that are vetted by the SBA. Next slide. Okay, grow your operations with uh, small business in, uh, investment companies. Again, this is a, a, a little repetitive, just goes into what else you can get. So you're not only making connections and getting gaining expertise in the industry, you can certainly um, receive some sort of um, either debt, equity, or a combination of both from these investors. Next page. Um, also, if you are in research and development, this is very interesting. This is a grant. This is not a loan. Um, the SBA is very interested in supporting approximately 10 different agencies that we work with, federal agencies that have an interest in connecting with small businesses that are doing research and development. So this is an opportunity for you to get funding for your project anywhere phase one into the third phase, which is usually where you start producing the product and you have to go and pursue a loan. But certainly um, there are going to be grants available. You have to respond to the solicitation. They're in different areas. Some of the ones that I can give you examples, nanotechnology. Um, again, take a look at the website. The next slide, if we can move to the next slide will give you uh, more information on the website. This is what the website um, looks like. 
So again, this the focus is we're focusing on technology um, focused small businesses. And here are some of the areas, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology. Um, so again, if you're in any of these, and even if you're not in any of these categories, I encourage you to just check out the website and see what other areas of interest um, the government has. Um, the website is sbir.gov for more information on this grant program and the eligibility criteria and how to submit an application. Next slide. The next one is Shorty Bonding. Um, this is a program that provides a guarantee as well on bonding. Um, the, the equivalent term for bonding is insurance. When, you, when you're in business, sometimes people that you work for will ask you for some sort of insurance letter uh, or proof of insurance. Um, so that's to limit their losses. If we can go to the next one, it expands a little bit more. So if you are interested in, uh, if you need the next, uh-huh, one more. Okay, we can, we, we can stop right there. Um, if you're interested in the, on the bonding program, these are very good. If you're gonna do business with the federal government, we're gonna talk a little bit about doing business with the federal government. If you wanna do business with the federal government, you're gonna have to bond your project 100%. So if you get a $5 million contract, you must have bonding up to $5 million if it's in construction. Most services do not require bonding. So if you're in that situation and you need bonding, even if it's not the federal government, sometimes state or local governments also require to have bonding. So that's uh, on bonding. Our next division in the SBA is business development and counseling. This covers all aspects of uh, of counseling, right? From, okay, I, I wanna start a business. I'm not sure what I wanna do. Um, I would like somebody to brainstorm with me how I could find an opportunity suitable for me for opening up a business. You know, you can even explore opening a franchise or, you know, getting a loan for a franchise. So again, opportunities are abound. But the way to go about um, saving a lot of time is to access these resources. If you look at the number of resource partners, we have over 1,400 partnerships um, or offices with our partners across the country and U.S. territories, providing support, advice, counseling, guidance, training, mentorship, I mean, you name it. Let's move to the next slide. Um, some of our resource partners, um, again, it's going to be, some people ask me, okay, Nancy, you have a lot of resource partners. How do I know which one I use? Well, first and foremost, each one of them might specialize, might do something that the other one doesn't do. So it's important for you to visit with each one of them. Also, I remember doing a presentation for Sir Mahal, I think it was last year. Um, and one of the things that I encourage small businesses to do is to use our counselors, our resource partners, as your board of directors. You can have as many as you like. They just don't have to know that you're in the board, you know, they're part of your board of directors. Why? Because you can counsel with them as often as you like in any subject. Some of them are going to be able to provide you counseling or transition assistance, transition from moving from, let's say, corporate America into starting your business. Um, there's many different transitions, transition into if you're currently in business and want to move from one industry to another, again, um, you name it, sky's the limit. Mentorship. Mentorship helps so many people. So if you're interested in a mentor that can work with you in any aspect of your business, you can certainly check with some of our resource partners. Some offer mentorship opportunities. We, again, providing um, they're providing training on different topics from reading and understanding your financial statements to, I mean, you name it, writing a business plan, doing your market research, so much training out there. There's training, in-person training, online training, um, free business consulting to start or grow your business. I mean, I'm not gonna read through each one of them. You get the picture. Pretty much anything related to the business is available for you. So don't think that you're here and you're by yourself in this journey. We have the resources 
to assist you in getting the, uh, in where you're going. Let's move on to the next slide. These are some examples of some of the resource partners and strategic partners we work with. Again, each one of them does something different. If you look at the top, NCTRCA, we're going to be talking about certifications. They do certification. The Dallas-Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council, they also do certification. So again, we have some that do certification and strictly government contracting and assisting with government contracting. Cross Timbers is another one that does a lot of government contracting and assisting in that regard. And then all our other resource partners provide some sort of guidance in preparing you for a loan, um, helping you write a business plan, uh, developing some sort of strategic plan to tackle a certain industry, some research, maybe to find an edge. So again, it, it's just an overwhelming amount of assistance and any aspect of the business is going to be covered. So let's move on to our next slide and talk about um, government contracting. And certainly this one's close to my heart because this is what I've been doing for a long time. But, you know, if you're in business, consider doing business with the federal government. The federal buys, the federal government is the largest buyer of goods and services in the world. Last year alone, they acquired over $600 billion in goods and services. And they acquire these by just posting these solicitations. Most of the solicitations will go up full and open. That means you're competing with large businesses. But if you wanna take advantage of federal, con federal, federal contracting programs, then certify yourself as a small business because then you're only gonna be competing with small businesses. Let's move on to our next slide. We're gonna talk about the certifications and um you know these are just examples of what the government buys but you know this is not only what the government buys the government buys so many different things we do have resources that you can do research to see if the government buys what you have to offer i can guarantee you 99 percent of the time the government's buying it so let's move on to our next page um, so again, we have our resource partners available. We can assist you. The first thing you should do if you're considering doing business with the federal government is a, an assessment. You should assess the, your marketability. Can you, you know, is there a market for you in the federal government? Figure out if you are prepared structurally to, uh, to take the challenge of government contracting. And certainly there are smaller contracts. So I've seen so smaller, very small, small businesses do business with the federal government. And I've seen the very larger ones that still fall under the small business category um, do business with the federal government. You know, you need to assess your systems and capabilities. Right now, the government is big in cybersecurity. And although we haven't moved to require everybody to be um, cybersecurity safe, um, it's my understanding that by 2024, it will be mandatory. And if you want to do business with the federal government, your system has to be cyber secure um, so that we don't go through the challenges we have been going through our recent um, breach um, to the uh, uh, gasoline industry or petro petroleum industry um, where they hacked the system and you saw what happened. So that's what the government is trying to avoid. And if you're going to be doing business with the government, you want to make sure that you are um, prepared to do business with the government and you're going to protect the interests of the small business by being protected yourself. Um, again, and then you have to know whether or not there's going to be the ability for you to find contracts in the federal government. So let's move on to our next slide. Um, why do business with the federal government? Everybody asks me that. Well, if you're a small business, look, we're 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 leveling the playing field so that it, it is it, it there is an opportunity for you to land a contract on a prime contractor basis, meaning you're gonna be the prime. We're not talking about you're gonna be the prime, excuse me. We're not talking about you being the sub or a third tier, meaning you're the subcontractor of a subcontractor of a subcontractor. No, the programs are designed for you, the small business to be the prime contractor on federal contracts. So, and this is the law. The law says that 23% of government buys have to be reserved for small business. 
There's another 5% for women, another 5 for small disadvantaged business, which includes the 8A program, 3% for hubs owned businesses, and 3% for service disabled veteran owned. So again, there's a lot of opportunities. And if you look at what the government has awarded to small business, if you take the, the uh, figure I just used, 600 billion, figure out 23% of 6 billion to determine the, the market. Let's go to our next slide. So this, is, this gives you an idea how much the government is buying. Look at the gray one, which is small business. Let's say you just want to become certified as a small business. Look at that. In starting in 2015, the government awarded $90 million to small businesses. By year 2019, they were awarding it $132.9 million. I don't have the 2020 figures, but I promise you, it is going to exceed the $132 million million dollars listed right here. All the rest are the different certifications. So yellow is service disabled veteran owned. Um, let's see, um, I'm sorry, green is small disadvantaged business, blue is women owned and red is hub zone. So there are awards and in every category there is an increase. So the government is interested in doing business with you. It's a great way to grow your business, scale your business, and you know that Uncle Sam is going to pay you. So let's move on to our next slide. This is our last area that we're covering in the SBA. This is uh, disaster assistance. And if we move on to the next slide, we will start covering what uh, is covered in a disaster assistance. Anytime that there is a natural disaster in the federal government, um, declares the area of disaster, you can request assistance from the SBA. This is the only program where SBA is the primary funding source, meaning the loan comes from the SBA and it can cover damages to your real estate, personal property, economic injury, which is a loss of income, like we've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people had to close their business. They had to close their doors, didn't have revenues coming in. So the injury is economic in nature. They still have to pay their bills at the end of the month. So the SBA provided a loan so that they could pay their bills as they become due at the end of the month. Um, we can also cover machinery, equipment, inventory, and then active duty military in case that something happens and a military member who's a key person in your business, or let's say you're the owner and you're the key person, you get called to active duty, there is assistance to cover for that damage. Let's go on to the next page. Great, we're gonna talk about disaster assistance as it relates to COVID because this has been the um, topic of, of preference right now due to the pandemic, unfortunately. We have been since 2019, since the beginning, early 2019, working on some of these different programs. We have the payroll protection program. We have the economic injury disaster loan. We just opened on May 3rd, the restaurant revitalization fund, which is certainly for those companies or those contractors in the food industry that had food or beverage industry that had to close their doors because they were ordered through either a state or government regulation to close the doors due to the pandemic. Um, then we also have the Shutter Venue Grant. Both the Restaurant Revitalization Fund and the Shutter Venue are loans, are grants, excuse me, the rest are loans. The other um, icon in the middle here is SBA um, Debt Relief. So if you've applied for an SBA loan before and you didn't have the funds to make your monthly payment, we can put your loan on deferment status so that you are not um, pressured to make that payment on an SBA loan. Next, let's move to our last slide, which talks a little bit more at length or highlights the, the two programs. Payroll Protection Program and EIDL, again, are loans. They started back in March of 2020. We also added, so we call them PPP1, and then we just recently opened PPP2. The first one, the PPP1, was to cover eight weeks of payroll. 
We were trying to make sure that you were able to keep your employees. PPP2 extends the coverage to 24 months. The EI deal came out again with a, with a loan as well, where we provided a loan for you to cover all expenses of the business from payroll to um, mortgage, if you had a mortgage or a lease agreement, any expense related to that business you could cover with either the EID alone or the PPP, but the PPP was strictly to help you retain those employees, right? Um, we came out with a second uh, iteration of economic injury. The first one would provide up to $150,000. The second one, which is the extension, and it's current right now, that one's running, allows you to pull up to $500,000 loan through this program to cover expenses of the business. In other words, uh, the lost uh, revenues that you're having. This is the economic injury um, loan that I was talking about. The last two ones are, again, grants. You do not have to repay them back. There's a lot of information on our website regarding these two programs. Uh, I encourage you to visit the website if you have suffered some sort of economic injury. Again, this is not for startups. You have to have been in business. For the restaurant revitalization, it's important that if you close your door, that closure was not permanent. But again, the restaurant revitalization just not only covers restaurants, it covers any food or beverage industry, um, a brewery uh, can certainly take advantage. I even, uh, um, they even mentioned that it's available if you have like a bed and breakfast as long as, let's say, the food portion accounts for 33% of your revenues. So if you have a hotel as well, um, you can qualify again, as long as 33% of your revenues come from uh, the food or beverage uh, served to the public. Uh, and certainly the shutter venue, which is the last one. Um, we're talking about uh, theaters, we're talking about any kind of entertainment industry that had to close their door because of the CDC requirement, no social distancing. Whether you were a venue stationary or a venue, because we had a lot of businesses that would participate, let's say in carnivals or uh, things of that nature. And certainly they couldn't because the, you know, the entertainment industry basically was completely shut. So those two industries um, have access to a grant. Please make sure that as soon as possible, if you fall under those categories and you're interested in exploring that, that you do it immediately. Um, again, this these two programs at the bottom, which are grants, are, are, will only be open until funds are exhausted. Once the funds are gone, then the program won't exist. EIDL um, will still be available till at least the end of this year and potentially could be extended depending on how things work out. The PPP expires on the 31st of this month, May. So again, if you're exploring that, please um, make sure that you know what the deadline is. Go to the website. It's going to tell you what documents you're going to need to apply. Let's move to the next page, Melissa or Raul, because I think our next and last is for questions. So Melissa, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you for everyone that is joining us now that got to experience that presentation from Nancy Alvarez, and I am looking for myself here so that you can see me. There we go. Okay, so Nancy, as always, you always provide us with the best information. Um, you know, and I'm sure that people will have questions. There are a few notes that I made during your presentation that I wanted to go back through through while people were uh, typing in their questions. Now, um, you did talk about, you know, businesses that are starting up and I want to relay a positive message to those that have not did not have a business in 2020 or 2019, but that are still looking to start a business now in 2021. What can you tell them about the assistance and the possibility of them actually starting a business even during and after recovering from this pandemic? Sure. You know, in the world of business and entrepreneurship is a world of opportunities. 
Um, you know, we've seen a lot of people that readjusted their industry through the pandemic and they moved into providing services complementary for the pandemic and they're doing extremely well. For those people that want to start a business and maybe they don't have any idea which route to take, what business industry to go into, I always tell them start with a self-assessment of yourself, right? Why do you want to go into business first and foremost? And then explore, there's some tools on SBA where you can take a self-assessment that will give you better indication whether, you know, entrepreneurship might be for you. And certainly that's because we're considering a lot of things, including um, sometimes we think that by becoming an a, a entrepreneur, we're going to work less. Um, but those that are in business that are probably in, online can tell you otherwise. Usually they're working 16 and 20 hours a day and they work seven days a week, right? Because this is your baby. Um, and so there is a limit for you to take care of your baby and make sure that it's healthy and it's growing. So again, I encourage everyone to utilize the tools. There are plenty of counseling out there. You're not at it alone. Um, a lot of people available to assist you. Um, so I, I hopefully that helped uh, in that regard, Melissa. It did, Nancy, thank you. And like you said, I, I do want to re reiterate what you just said. You know, I know that currently in, on social media, um, you see entrepreneurs doing great things or jumping, jumping back or uh, businesses opening or uh, these great new ideas that people are taking on um, after they've been laid off or because they want to change their career or because they're passionate about something and they want to do it now. I do want to let you guys know that Nancy is absolutely correct. Having your own business means that you get what you put in. So she's right. We work seven days a week, sometimes 24 hours a day because you're trying to make it. And really the first couple of years will be just that is trying to make it so that you can get to a place where you can now take the next step like Nancy uh, told us in her presentation because now you're growing or hopefully you you start to grow and now you're thinking okay i want to take the next step you know how am i going to access capital to do that so i also wanted to ask you a little bit more about that you know you talked about what the sba considers um and possibly banks can you tell us a little bit more about how flexible the sba is with those requirements so uh, that's a great question because remember, let's start from the beginning. The SBA is the, the guarantor. So we're gonna guarantee up to 85%. That's why it's so important that you work with a lender. We usually ask people, look, if you have a lender that you currently lend with and you have a working relationship with them, that should be your first stop because they don't have to earn your business. They already have it. They have to work on keeping it, right? So first start with your lender and see what kind of loans. If your lender is not doing an SBA loan or if they don't offer you an SBA loan, it could be that you're uh, not a credit risk. A lot of people come back and tell me, hey, Nancy, I asked them for an SBA loan, but they didn't offer me an SBA loan. And so, well, that means that you're not a credit risk. Maybe you have been in business for five years or eight years and they feel pretty comfortable and it's easier for them to do a commercial loan than to do an SBA loan because there's more paperwork, the terms are longer, um, and we do uh, put a cap on how much they can charge an interest in this, these loans. Now, very important. I know when you're starting, sometimes you don't need a lot of money. Maybe you just need $50,000. Not every bank is going to offer that small amount of money. It's just not for them. If you go to probably Bank of America, one of the big name bankers, they're probably not going to do a small loan. And maybe that's all you need to start, you know? And it doesn't mean you're going to be a small mom and pop. But there are what we call micro lenders. So we have two here in the local area that can work and they do the smaller loans. So again, if you don't explore what SBA has, what products, and you don't have to know all of SBA's products, because trust me, they are a lot, 
Um, as long as you're going to one of our resource partners or an SBA lender, they will put you on the right loan. Just know the difference that the regular larger loans, the loans larger than $150,000, you probably wanna go with a larger bank. Um, hopefully you are working with a larger bank at that point, but if not community banks, or micro lenders are the route to go for the smaller loans. Thank you, Nancy. And I am replying to some of the people that are sending some questions that I absolutely know the answer to, so I don't take up too much of your time. But something else that I took a note of is, um, you know, you talk about community resource resources, um, and believe me, guys, especially over these last couple of months, I head back to the SBA website almost every day because the information I, I can't remember if nancy you you said this but the information uh to assist small businesses right now is changing every day every week it's something new sometimes the form changes sometimes the application changes or sometimes it's just some minor detail that has changed so please like nancy said go to the website there's tons of material there tons of information there and contact information of who you can contact now nancy you mentioned uh community resources and of course we are here some head is available for all of you out there uh women that are wanting to start a business or need assistance with starting your business we are definitely here we're a smaller scale organization that but we do have uh, the ability to match you up with some community resources like SBA, like Nancy, or like Lift Fund, which Nancy mm -hmm. had on one of her sites. Um, but one thing I did want to mention that mentors are very important, like you said, and myself, we've been working with SCORE in Fort Worth, and they have been pretty amazing because we don't have all the answers. <laughs> especially if you're just starting out and you've never owned a business before you do not have all the answers and sometimes it is very overwhelming to look through information online so going to resources like nancy said like score or lift fund or seven head um, can help you with browsing through that information and really looking at the information that applies to you now nancy one of the questions that came in was if you're working with score or lift fund is the probability of getting a loan a lot higher if you go through one of these organizations? That's a great question. Um, and, and I don't have the rate, so I'm gonna, I can't back up my answer with the rate, but I can tell you that I've seen a lot more people be able to walk away with a loan, okay, when all factors are positive. Remember, we looked at those criteria that the bankers are looking for, and certainly the SBA when we're providing the guarantee, we're relying on the analysis that the bank did. So, you know, remember to, to, to you know, research your, your, your sources to, to keep them in mind because they do have access to a lot of the information. Not only that, they are constantly working with the bank. So they're in a great position to say, okay, you're in the restaurant industry. Okay, I'm not gonna send them to this one because I know they don't do restaurant, you know, loans. Um, and so they know the lenders out there because they're the, the sort of intermediary in the sense that they are helping package the loan. Additionally, they know usually the criteria for the bankers. So the more you work with those resources out there that are connecting with the with the lenders, um, you know, the better off you're going to be because your loan can be processed a lot quicker. Okay. Uh, it, it can be approved a lot quicker because you're providing the information. The, the, the resource partner knows what you need. Um, so again, I think that it, it, it helps tremendously uh, when you use a resource partner. It is not Thank required you. though. So you're not required to use one, but certainly, hey, the SBA is funding a lot of the, these resource partners. So why not use them, you know? Thank you, Nancy. Now, something else that you mentioned, and I know you've said this before in our presentations on our Seminole Hair Virtual Series, that you brought up board of directors and how important that is um, for small businesses. Can you explain that a little bit more to our small business owners, what board of directors is and what you mean by that? Sure. You know, and, and, and there's different terms, and there's also the additional uh, term used, which is advisory council, right? 
So let's look at this from, uh, from a larger perspective, right? If you start looking at success rate for companies out there, large companies, you're going to notice that most, if not all of them, and I, can, I haven't seen one that does not have a board of directors, um, all companies have a board of directors. That board of directors assists the company in their direction by providing advice. Additionally, they can have an advisory council. The advisory council are non-paid members, right? And what they are doing is they're providing, they're offering that business their expertise. That's why I associate the counselors with a board of advisors or board of directors. They're going to give you their take, right, based on their expertise. And the good thing is that you don't have to take it. And they might give you different options. And so it's your responsibility to pick the strategy that you feel is appropriate for you. And so again, you're gaining from the expertise of somebody that's not charging you, and you don't have to use it if you don't feel that's the direction you wanna go, but at least you have some information and some guidance from somebody that has a lot of knowledge and they're not paying you to, you know, to grow your business. You're getting the assistance for free. Thank you, Nancy. Another question that has come in is, and, and this is important because I'm sure other people think of this as well, is do you have do you have to have an SBA loan to qualify for the program's relief funds available for COVID losses? No, you do not. Um, so I spoke about different assistance through COVID um, because there is a lot of demand. In my 23 years in the SBA, I have never, ever seen the amount of people that have come through, um, you know, with regards to assistance. So again, the key here is some programs are specifically COVID related, but for example, and this is just an example, if you are in a natural disaster, let's say you are, uh, God forbid, in a tornado and the area is declared by the federal government a natural disaster, they they sign a declaration for your area, you're entitled automatically to SBA disaster assistance. Most important, let me reiterate this because people think that we're the SBA and they're not in business so they can't get the help and that's not true. If you own a residence and you are in a natural disaster, there's a declaration and FEMA, you do not qualify for FEMA's assistance, okay? You can get a low interest loan from the SBA to repair your home. We just went through the storm in November. That was a natural disaster and it was declared by the federal government a disaster. That means that everybody here in the state of Texas qualified for SBA's disaster assistance under that declaration. So again, a lot of assistance just people do not understand, but you do not have to have a loan with the SBA for any type of assistance with the SBA. Remember that the SBA is a federal agency and your taxes pay for the services that you're getting. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. Something that I came across while trying to um, get help assistance through either relief funds or, or grants that are out there for small businesses is that there are, um, specific grants for women-owned businesses. Can you explain to our audience what is a women-owned business? What are the requirements? Because I myself didn't know that even though I'm a, I'm a business owner or co-owner, that doesn't necessarily apply to me. Okay, so this is a great question, but let me clarify the concept of a grant uh, for a women-owned small business. The SBA is gonna have some grant, but those grants are open to anyone. So you could be a women-owned business. You could be, as long as you're small, um, you, qual you qualify for grants. Now, there are no grants for starting a business. I, I just wanted to clarify that. There are no grants to start a business. So the only assistance through the SBA is through a loan. And I don't know of any other federal agency that would provide a loan to start up. Okay, but the assistance is available to everyone. Now let's talk about this concept of women-owned um, small business. 
And the only program right now, which is a grant, which is available um, for priority groups and women happen to fall in that priority group is the restaurant revitalization program. So that is a grant. However, again, it's not a grant to start. So it's if you had some sort of restaurant, it could be a food truck, it could be a food stamp, uh, a food stamp, a food stand. I said a food stamp, I'm sorry, a food stand. Um, so any kind of refreshment or that you're providing, okay, qualifies you for this grant. Again, but you have to demonstrate that you were in business during the pandemic and maybe you had to, to again, the assistance is for those affected by the pandemic. And that's the confusion here with, with the grant. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Now, one last thing, certification. If you want to certify yourself as a women-owned in the federal arena, it's because you want to pursue federal contracting and you as a woman only want to compete with other women. And that's fair because that's why we designed that program. We designed it so that you're only competing with other women. You're not competing with other small businesses. You're competing with women. And that gives you a better chance of landing a project with the federal government as a prime contractor. Thank you, Nancy. And I didn't see deadlines for the COVID relief funds. I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned it or not, but I know that we discussed the EIDL that does not have a deadline just yet, correct? The EIDL does not have a deadline. If there is any, it's going to be the end of this year. And the end of this year, they're going to reevaluate if there's still significant impact to the economy. And then they'll extend it. The one that's ending is the PPP. And certainly um, the shutter venue, which is a grant, and the restaurant revitalization, which is also a grant, will end when the funds are expired. You know, those are grants. So people are going to go, I, I heard that three days into opening, we had 16,000 applications. And I did want to mention to everyone out there that has not been to the SBA website or has not applied to any of these relief funds that Nancy has discussed today. Uh, please, it is not that difficult. It really isn't. It, there is requirement of documents, but as long as you have those, you know, on your laptop, on hand, you know, ready to go, it really is an easy process. It may take you no more than 15, 20 minutes, honestly. Mm -hmm. And it can really change um, how you survive these next couple of months. So please, we welcome you to visit the SBA website to get onto these portals to apply. You know, what is it? All they can say is no, right, Nancy? That is correct. And hey, listen, most importantly, I forgot to say this, but you know, you do not have to have a social security. A lot of people think that they're going to need a social security. So if you're running your business as an independent contractor, you're using your social security, or let's say you're not using your social security, you're using an ITIN, the SBA will accept your application as long as you have a valid ITIN, it's active. So if it's not active, run immediately to the IRS to get it reinstated. But yes, if you have an ITIN, active ITIN, you can apply with your ITIN. We also accept the social security, certainly. And uh, the third option is the EIN. So uh, those are the three that we will accept in your application as, uh, you know, ID. Well, we are uh, closing here. We're wrapping up, Nancy. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience while you still have them online about the SBA and what you guys can provide for them? Well, yes, first and foremost, let me start by thanking you and Ser Mujer for the opportunity to reach out to the, the Hispanic small business community or aspiring entrepreneurs, first and foremost. And second, I want to encourage your viewers. I want to encourage if they are not, you know, to stay in touch with you. The only reason why they're listening to me today is because of you. So I can't emphasize the importance of staying connected with local resources, engaging them, becoming members, um, things of that nature, because we're just the little guys here. We're just one and we serve as 72 counties. We couldn't do it without help like your organization. So again, thank you for having me. Thank you, Nancy. And I just, I wanna point out that you and your staff are amazing. You guys 
If you don't answer the phone, you call back the next day or within a, within a few hours, you do not get a, a, a voice recording, you get a live person. So please, I know that we are all anxious because we're trying to pay bills or we're trying to pay our staff, but they are here to help us. Um, just be patient and somebody will be with you. Um, continue trying, uh, don't give up. If you've made it this far, you definitely can make it a few more months. Who knows? There might be something else that comes up. We it's never correct. know, right, Nancy? <laughs> that is correct. That's why we want you to visit the website because, again, we weren't expecting the restaurant revitalization. And there it is all of a sudden. So you just don't know like, what might come up. Stay tuned to the website so that you're able to take advantage of the program. And if we can help in any other aspects, please don't give us, you know, don't hesitate to give us a call. Again, be patient with us. Yes, we are nearing the close of the PPP, so we're getting high volume today. I'll be working over time just to catch up with calls, but we love what we do and we're here to help, so. Thank you and again, Nancy, and thank you to all your staff. Thank you for supporting our small business community. I thank will see you. you again soon, I'm sure.